so much that God has assigned us to do, not just as Perfecting Faith Church, but consistently, the body of Christ around the world has an assignment. It's to go into the hedges and the highways, compel people to come. They won't know about Jesus unless we tell them. The love of Jesus Christ will not be portrayed until we show it through our actions. He's coming soon, and I want every one of you to believe that and know it with all of your heart. Jesus is coming soon. And although we've said it for years and it's been preached longer than we've been born, it's been preached for almost 2,000 years that Jesus Christ will return, and he shall. Because you must remember, it's not, it's, it's, it's not the immediacy of it. It is the absolute assurance of it. He is going to come as a thief in the night. No man knows the day nor the hour that the Son of Man will return. But we've got an obligation until his return to tell a world about his love. And remember the gospel, the gospel. That word gospel means good news. And it's our job not to declare the doom and the gloom, but we must tell them of the wrath to come. But that's not the crux of the message. The crux of the message of the kingdom is not the punishment that is to come. It is not the fear of hell. No, no. The crux of the message starts with John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For God so loved the world. For God loved the world. He loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever would believe in him would not perish but would have everlasting life. God didn't send Jesus into the world to condemn the world. He didn't send Jesus into the world to condemn the world. For Jesus is God. Jesus made everything that is made. He didn't come here to condemn the world, but he came that the world through him might be saved. That's the king, the message. That's the crux of the message of the gospel. The good news that Jesus Christ came down to this earth to redeem man, to redeem lost man of whom we are. We are the ones who were lost. We are the ones who did not have any hope. But because of the love of Jesus Christ, because of the plan of God, we have, given, we have been given eternal life in the world to come and abundant life on this earth today. But we cannot forget that Jesus Christ is going to return and there's going to be a wonderful appearing, a wonderful appearing, hallelujah, a wonderful appearing of Jesus Christ as he snatches and he captures and raptures the body of Christ away. This is the day that's coming because all signs point to it. I've preached this message countless times. All signs point to the coming of Jesus Christ. This pandemic points to the coming of Jesus Christ. This racial uprising points to the coming of Jesus Christ. Even the chaos of the election points to the coming of Jesus Christ. Nations rising up against point to the coming of Jesus Christ. And we will not be blind. And we will not be foolish. We understand that our time is limited here and we've got a work to do before the return of Jesus. All signs point to the coming and the return of Jesus Christ. In the book of Matthew 24, it says this. It says in the third verse, and as Jesus sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately asking him, tell us, when shall these things that you spoke of be? And what shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceives you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And they shall, de they shall deceive many foolish people and you will hear about wars that are rising up and rumors of wars that are about to start he said but see that you be not troubled for all of these things must come to pass 
but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise up against nation. And I want you to remember this verse in verse 7. For nation shall rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine and pestilence, pandemics, and earthquakes in very strange and diverse places. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and Christians shall betray one another, shall betray one another and shall even hate one another over politics, hate one another, over difference of reform, hate one another, over partisanship, hate one another and betray one another. And many false prophets shall rise up and give false prophecies. Many false prophets shall arise and will deceive many. And because iniquity and sin abound so greatly, the love of many shall wax cold and he that endures but he that shall endure until the end the same shall be saved and this is the verse and this good news and this gospel and this good news of the love of God of the kingdom of God shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. Let me stop here. It will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. That word nations, it does not reflect countries. It reflects ethnicities and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations that word in the Greek nations is ethnos ethnos is where we get the word ethnicity and this is saying that this gospel will be preached to every man every walk of life when it said in verse 7 Matthew 24 7 it said for nation shall rise up against nation the word ethnos for nation ethnicity shall rise up against ethnicity and kingdom against kingdom that's country against country I've preached this countless times in this church but we're seeing this thing play out in front of our eyes and we get so upset and we get so involved and we get so confused and we get so outraged and we don't realize that everything that we're seeing has already been prophesied. This is what God said would happen before the coming of Jesus Christ. This is what Christ prophesied and it has come to pass in our era, in our day, in our generation. My brother and sister, Jesus is coming soon. And, and, and in the Bible, in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, the first verse, it says, and know also, this know also, that in the last days, everyone say the last days. Everyone say the last days. That in the last days, perilous times shall come. We are in the last days right now. And we are in some of the most perilous times that this, this nation and this world has ever seen. Everything is sensitive and this is a powder keg environment. We are living in a time where everything is in a, a, at an explosive pitch. Perilous times, hunger, perilous times, economic downfall, perilous time, poverty, perilous times, unemployment, perilous times, vigilantism, perilous times with domestic violence and domestic terrorism, 
perilous times where religion has taken on the, uh, the, 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 the attitude of monstrosity where we've become so, so ravenous and so, 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 so destructive that we pose to be our own problems in religion. Man, this is a perilous time. He said, this, no, that in the last days, they shall be perilous times. The last days, perilous times. The last days, perilous times. In 2 Peter, the third chapter, the third verse, it says, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days, scoffers, people who mock us, in the last days, there will be an uprising of scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? You said he's coming. Well, where is, where is he? Where is he? For since the fathers fell asleep and died, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of the creation. Where is this coming of Jesus Christ? In the last days, the voices of many will rise up refuting the coming of Christ, the validity of Christ. The last days, perilous times shall come. But also, if you read in the book of Acts, the second chapter, when you hear Peter preach to the masses, he says, no, this is that. They're not drunk. This is that that the prophet Joel spoke of. That in the last days, yes, perilous times, but in the last days, yes, scoffers will rise up. Yes, in the last days, there'll be false prophets. Yes, in the last days, nations shall rise up against nation. Yes, in the last days, kingdom shall rise up against kingdom. Yes, in the last day, there will be famine. There will be pestilence. There will be pandemics. Yes, in the last days, all of these things shall arise. But also in the last days, hallelujah. He said, this is that what the prophet Joel spoke about, that in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And I will raise up your sons and daughters. Those that should have been statistics because of society. I will raise up your sons and daughters. Those who should have been sucked up in the vortex of the evil of the day. I will raise up your sons and daughters. I will break the curse over their lives. And I will liberate them. And I will cause them to rise up and stand in authority. I don't hear anybody here. Cause them to be free. From the curse of the day, I will raise up your sons and daughters in the last day. I will pour up my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy about me. They will tell the world about me. Your sons and daughters will be my mouthpieces. Your sons and daughters I will use in order to turn the world right side up. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. And I will, not I will not eliminate the elders for the older men still have got to dream dreams. We still need the elders to dream dreams that can talk about what God showed them in the days before, that can speak about what God spoke to them in the days of yesterday. We still need the dreams of the elders. I don't hear anybody. We still need the dreams of the elders. Yes, God. He called the young because they're strong, but he called the old because they know the way. We need the dreamers of the elders. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. And upon your manservants and your handmaidens, I will pour out my spirit. Yes, the last days do have some calamitous uh, uh, attributes, but it also has a promise. The last days do carry a weight of heaviness, but it also carries a hope for tomorrow. Yes, the last days is when the church rises up. Hallelujah. It's when the church rises up. The last day is when the church gets its feet and stands straight and tall. It's the last day is when the voice of the church 
it's reverberating around the world. The last day is when we can look into a camera and have this message circle the globe in seconds to inspire the Christian body to rise up, to walk outside after the broadcast is over and tell somebody about this glorious Christ, to inspire somebody who's lost hope that's watching this service that you can pick up from where you left off and get back into the glorious kingdom of God. This gospel of the kingdom is circling the globe even as I speak. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, in all the world in all the world as a witness to every nationality as a witness are y'all hearing me to every nationality the problem is Tyler the problem is we get so comfortable in our religiosity that we forget our assignment we get so comfortable in our churchology that we forget why we were saved we get so comfortable and so accustomed to the wranglings of religion and the church organization that we forget that we're not an organization, we're an organism. We are a living entity. Hallelujah. And we must declare the truth of Jesus Christ to the world. How else will they know? How else will they hear? In the book of Romans, the 10th chapter, Paul said, how can they call on whom they don't believe in? And, and how can they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? Not someone with a collar, but someone who will open their mouth and preach this word to them. And how can they preach unless God sends them? except they be sent and it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things how beautiful are the feet why, why would he say the feet because the feet denote mobility the feet denote mobility meaning that the gospel is not stationary that the gospel has got to move that the gospel has got to travel that the gospel must reach its locations we must carry the word of God we must carry the word of God how beautiful are the feet of those who bring glad tidings bring who bring who carry the word we've held the word hostage too long in the sanctuaries and maybe that's why the sanctuaries are closed down maybe it's to get this gospel outside of the four walls and bring that gospel to the people that are dying outside of the four walls the people the people are dying. Not from just a pandemic. But they're dying without hope. They're dying without the truth of God. They're dying without us delivering the love of God to them. We are quick to condemn people to hell. We are quick to be aggressive with this, with this religion. But God loves. God loves. You're preaching weakness. When has love ever been weak? Yeah, you're being too lenient. When has love ever been weak? Love doesn't condemn. Love corrects. Love brings truth and hope. Love makes people understand that you are not a lost cause. That Christ knew about your sin before you even sinned the sin. And he loves you. There's an old Caribbean song that says, Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, 
snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. Weep over the erring one and lift up the fallen. Tell them of Jesus, the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing and care for the dying. Tell them Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. We are not telling the world about this. I found a friend who is all to me. His love is ever true. Ooh, I love to tell how he lifted me and what his grace can do for you. We used to sing this in church all the time. I'm saved by his power divine. Saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete for I'm saved. 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 Those songs would inspire us in the service to go out and tell somebody about Jesus. How to reach the masses, men of every birth, for the answer Jesus gave the key. He said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I would draw all men unto me. The next verse said, all the world is hungry for this living bread. Lift the Savior up for Mandela Laboshe to see. Trust him and do not doubt the words that he said. I will draw all men unto me. So lift him up. Lift him up. Still he speaks from eternity. Saying, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto. <laughs> the, 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 the saints used to mess the words up and say, till he speaks. But that's not what it said. It said, lift him up. Lift Jesus up. Still he speaks from eternity. Saying if I, I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Are we doing this work? How many souls have died even while this message is being preached? This world is vast. 7.6 billion people on this earth. This world is vast. In America, 330 million. This world is vast. While I'm speaking, how many people went into eternity, either into heaven or to hell? Do we even think like that anymore? How many souls are being lost while we are walking around with this gospel hidden in us, hidden under a bushel? This light that we have hidden under a bushel. Brother and sister, we've got a job to do. Jesus is coming soon. And when he comes, he needs to find us working. He needs to find us about his business. Showing the love of Jesus Christ to every man, woman, boy, and girl. Making sure that we let them know that they are loved by God. Not condemned. Loved by God. 
Can I pray for those of you that may have fallen away and watching? May I pray for those of you that may have been silent and let people's lives pass by without telling them about the good news? Can I pray for you that God would inspire you, motivate you, recharge you, cause you to take this so seriously that every soul matters to you? All souls matter. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ for all who have lost their fire, for all who have lost their zeal in this room and watching through the screen, for every one of you who have laid the banner down and have been marginalized in life and lost the passion, the passion of Christ. I pray that a new fire would be ignited in your heart, that a new flame would roar in you and that you would come alive and that the kingdom's agenda would be a part of your daily life and that you would tell men and women of all degrees about the love of Jesus Christ that can save any and every man. I pray that you would come alive and that you would be the mouthpiece that would speak about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and prepare men to come and reconcile men back to God with the same spirit of reconciliation that was given unto you. I pray this in Jesus' name, that you would rise up again in strength, rise up again in passion, rise up again in power, rise up again in the name of the Lord Jesus, our Christ, our Christ, our Christ, and that you would deliver this gospel of the kingdom. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would never be the same after this message and that you would open up your mouth and tell everyone that you meet about the wonderful Jesus, the beautiful Jesus, the saving Jesus. I pray this in Jesus' name and I pray this so that you can come alive. And if you prayed this prayer with me and if you found yourself in this message, and if you pray this prayer with me, and if you realize that I've come alive and I'm here for a purpose, the reason why you haven't died is because there's an assignment that God's given you for lost and dying people. If you pray this prayer with me, please just simply type in, I prayed that prayer. That's right. It's on the screen. Type four words. I prayed that prayer. No emojis, no other words. Just type four four words I prayed that prayer it will signal us only four words anything more we won't get the signal but four words type it exactly as you see it on the screen I prayed that prayer it will alert us and we will reach out to you and we will congratulate you and we will be with you in this walk we will pray with you and we will win this world together for Jesus Christ I love you <laughs> 